Now, when you're working this way, you want to be careful that even though you're working this way, you never let your blade slide this way at all. If you have to, if you have to when you're working this way, cheat by pushing it that way, push it away from the edge. If you have to. If you don't trust yourself, if you just feel like you're being a little sloppy, that's fine. It's better to push it a little bit away and get a teeny bit of a diagonal scratch on there than to go this way and to ruin your edge, okay? Try to only scratch in one direction though. Don't don't be don't be on your paper doing this way, okay? because it's, it's hard to control. And as you see, one direction I go this way, and the other direction I go this way, which is dulling my, dulling my edge. So go the same direction. Go the same direction, okay? As you polish, as you go through the grits, your sword is going to get sharper and sharper and sharper until it's really, really scary razor sharp. All right, so what do you do if you got a secondary bevel, like this beast did? All right, you got a couple of choices. If the bevel's really bad and really thick, you might want to use a file. And you might want to go down the edge of that sword with a file. Just place it right on the jean, just like you do with a paper, and then angle it out just a little bit. The idea is you want to place, you want to place your uh, your file perpendicular to the corner of the secondary bevel and you want to wear that secondary bevel down, okay? Some swords, like this one, are um, hardened really well and they had a really good polish on it and a file just slides off. This file really does not do much damage to this sword. So, I went back to the good old stone. This is just a plain old combination whetstone. It's got two grits on it, the grit that it calls coarse and the grit that it calls fine. I don't think the fine grit on this is very fine at all. I would say the fine grit on this one is probably about like uh, somewhere between 300 and 400 grit sandpaper. Whereas the rough grit, man, I don't know, it's rough. Um, I only use the rough side of this when I've got serious shaping to do. Like with this blade, i got to get rid of this secondary bevel, and there's a lot of material to remove. So I'm working it on this side first, okay? I work with this one, coarse, then fine. Then, I like to go to this, this stone, which is both sides, even its coarse side and its fine side, are finer than, than the fine side on this one. And then finally, I've got this itty bitty little Arkansas stone. And you may laugh at it and think, oh, isn't it cute? It's uh, so silly. But you know what, man? It, it works. Okay? Just remember with the stone, to always use plenty of oil. I like 3-in-1 household oil. They do make honing oil that they say is you can buy that's supposedly specifically for this. Um, I don't really care for the type of honing oil that they, they sell in the stores most of the time. But uh, So I, I use 3-in-1 oil. Um, if the, the coarser your stone is, the quicker it's going to soak your oil up. All right. So you're going to have to apply the oil constantly and keep it wet. Healthy amount of oil. I'm going to work this area right here. Again, I just put the whole face of the blade right down on it. And I lift the back up just a tiny bit. You probably can't even see that movement. I'll flip it this way. On double-edged swords, I like to work one edge at a time. Work this edge and its opposing edge and get this side all completely done, at least with the shaping, before I even work on this edge, okay? And this is where a piece of leather 
rolled up comes in real handy. I mean, I tell you what, as this thing gets sharp, you're not going to hold this, you're not going to want to grip this. I sure don't. This side's not sharp yet. It takes a while, but you'll get there. Patience. Patience is the key to any of this. And um, you know what? It's that simple. It really is. Okay, to summarize, doesn't matter if you've got a katana or a western sword, as long as they have a geometry where the cutting edge is convex or flat, this sharpening process will work for that sword. I don't recommend this process for concave or hollow ground blades. Okay? There's not a whole lot of those out there unless you're buying expensive stuff. And then, well, if you're buying really expensive stuff, maybe you want to get a professional to do this anyway. So remember, on your sword, work the whole face of the blade from the, from the ridge line either be it a center ridge line or whether it be the edge of a fuller all the way down to the cutting edge of your sword okay doesn't matter if it's a western sword or a katana you work the entire face what the Japanese call the gene okay that's what you work you don't work a little bit of it you work the whole thing work slow be patient Take a look at your work. Look at your work often. Watch your scratch pattern to make sure that you're actually getting the entire face of the blade. Okay? Remember to always move your abrasive across your blade in one direction instead of working back and forth. And don't take paper across your sword this way. Always take it this way, okay? Because that will that will, going going this way will dull your sword. Going this way will sharpen it. Sharpening, dulling. Move in one direction only. Pick the blade up. Move in one direction only. Pick the blade up. Move in one direction only. Moving in one direction limits stray scratches. Limits. The weird angles you're going to get from just from random um, the random motions that your body is going to throw in just when you throw it back and forth you're not going to get a nice straight nice straight even lines going back and forth like that going back and forth is okay when you're shaping when you're doing uh, the the more the coarser grit stuff because you're going to polish all that stuff out and it's going to all disappear in the end and it'll save you some time. But when you're doing the high grit, when you're doing the fine work, don't do it. All right. Um, make sure you use oil. Lots of oil. Lubricate your cutting surface. It will stay clean. It will cut longer. It will service you better. Uh, the wet dry sandpaper will actually make a slurry on top of the paper that as you get into the higher grits and as you rub it will it'll make like a paste or a slurry and it will further polish your blade make it more beautiful and sharper okay and that's really it just be patient work your way through it remember what I talked about and um, you'll have nice sharp attractive blades